Can you see above our head a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So, info gap. Take one. Info gap. Okay. All right. Today, I'm going to teach you a new language routine called the info gap. Language routines in math help us as mathematicians to explain our reasoning, to write and be more clear and strong in our understanding, and to solve problems with each other. So it helps cultivate our conversations. It helps maximize our output and our ability to solve problems. Today's language routine is called the info gap, and you work with a partner. You each have a job, and without each other, you cannot solve the problem. So we're going to model this here today. This is Sarah, and Sarah's going to help me model the info gap. One of us has the problem card, and one of us has the data card. When you have the problem card, I'm just going to go ahead and read what you would do if you're the person with the problem card. You silently read your card, and you think about what information you would need to answer the question. You then ask your partner for specific information on their data card. You don't know what's on their card, but you're going to ask information to see if they have that information. You explain how you solve the problem. The person with the data card would silently read their information, and their job is to ask the partner, what information do you need? Why don't you practice that, Sarah? What information do you need? That's great. And then when I say what information I need, she then has to challenge me further by saying, why do you need to know that? Why do you need to know that? And that gets me to think about, well, why do I need to know that? Why do I need that number or that value? How is that going to help me solve the problem? This helps to push our thinking to be deeper understanding. After your partner solves the problem, you're going to ask me to explain my reasoning, unless I've already explained it as I talked about solving the problem. OK, so I'm the problem card person. Sarah is the data card person. We are ready to begin. Okay. You can even look in the camera and go, why do you need to know that? Okay. Ham it up a little bit. Okay. The data card person kind of has the easier job at first, right? Am I filming still? Yes. I forgot. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> we'll edit this out. No, that'll be the funny outtake, right? Mai and Noah each leave their houses at the same time and ride their bikes to the park. My job is to write an equation for each person that relates the distance they travel and the time. Also, I have to answer the question, who will arrive at the park first? Okay, I'm ready. Uh, what information do you need? Well, I need to know how far Mai lives from the park. How far does Mai live from the park? So why do you need to know it? Well, I feel like I need to know the distance that she had to ride her bike from the park to be able to figure out how long it took her to get to the park. So I'm just going to start by drawing a visual model. This is my P for park. And I'm going to pretend Mai lives right here. And Noah lives right here. And they both are going to the park. I, I guess in my mind I'm imagining they're on opposite sides, but that's not necessarily true. But that just helps me to visualize the problem. So I need to know how far away Mai is from the park. And if I have that, then I can compare that to how far away Noah lives from the park. Wait, how far does Mai live from the park? Uh, Mai lives 8,000 meters from the park. 8,000 meters. Okay. Hmm. What other information do you think you need? I need to be able to compare the distance from Maya to the park to the distance to Noah. So I need to know how far Noah lives from the park. And I think I've already justified why. So why do you think you need to know that? So that I can compare the two and see who lives farther. So Noah lives one kilometer farther away from the park than Maya does. One kilometer farther. <clears throat> Hmm. Now I'm noticing this is in meters and this is in kilometers, so I think I have to think about a conversion there. I think there's a thousand meters is equal to one kilometer. So I think I would just add a thousand onto there, so Noah lives 9,000 meters from the park. But that's not going to help me solve who got there first. So what information do you need? I think I need to know like what speed each one was going to the park. Like is one riding really slow? Is one riding really fast? Why do you think you need to know that information? Well, if I know the distance and then I know the, sp 
like how fast they're riding, I can figure out like how far they get per minute, maybe. Okay, so how? What's the constant speed of my? 250 meters per minute. 250 meters per minute. And she lives 8,000 meters. Okay, now I need to know the constant speed of Noah. Why do you need to know that information? Well, I have to know the constant speed of Noah and Maya so I can compare and I can find what their unit rate is. And then I can compare the unit rates. And I think that'll help me solve the problem. So constant speed of Noah is? 300 meters per minute. Okay, so there's a few different ways I could do this. I'm picturing a table maybe for each one. So I could do one minute to 250 meters. So we've got time, we've got distance. And then if I make another table here, time and distance, one minute to 300 meters. And then if I know that my lives 8,000 meters away, I could scale up to figure it out. I also could figure out one to get to, from one to 250 is multiplying by 250. So I know that the constant of proportionality is 250. So then what times 250 gives me 8,000? So I'm gonna use inverse operations here. I'm gonna go 8,000 divided by 250. Let's see. Okay, so that is, 8,000 divided by 250 is, is 32 minutes. So I think it took 32 minutes for Mai to get from her home to the park. Now let's check out Noah. Okay, so same thing here, but we've got 9,000 minutes, 9,000 meters. I could scale up here. I already know that really quickly. So I'm using scale factor instead of the constant of proportionality this time. I'm showing how diversified I am in my mathematical thinking. Okay, so 300 goes into 9,030 times. So if I times 30 here, that would be 30 minutes. Aha, I might have solved it, I might have solved it. Let me go back, I gotta reread and see what did I need to do. For each person write an equation that relates distance and time. Okay, I didn't do that yet. Who will arrive at the park first? Well, did they leave at the same time? Let me reread it. Mai and Noah each leave their house at the same time. Okay, so if they leave at the same time, the lower time is 30 minutes, so I'm gonna say that Noah arrived first. But I still have work to do because I haven't solved the equation. So my COP here is 30, wait, 300, and my COP here is 250. So my equation would be, I wanna put it in that Y equals KX form y equals 250x, and my equation here would be y equals 300x. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so Noah arrived first, and I had already explained my reasoning, but if I had not, my partner would then say, you need to prove why Noah got there first, and then you need to show me how you got your equation, but I did that. So Sarah did such a great job helping me out. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks. Now you guys are ready to give it a try.